What's going on, y'all? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Miami. This is season three, episode five, Overstepping Boundaries. Hmm. Before we get into the review, as always, church announcements. If you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to your Auntie channel. I'll be giving y'all that high fire over here. Before you leave, let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know. Bing, your auntie done uploaded some new shit shit, okay? Y'all, this episode was popping. It was so much shit going on. Um, quick updates I want to give you guys. My brother is finally out of the hospital. Hallelujah. He is out of the hospital. He is at the rehab center, um, and he is on his road to recovery. Um, before he actually got into the accident, he was being nominated, or he got an award for the top barbers here in Austin, Texas. As y'all know, he is a barber, and he ain't no shade tree ass goddamn barber, no middle of the mall ass barber. He hooked your shit up, okay? Designs and all of that shit. So, um... He was one in five of the top barbers here in Austin, Texas, y'all. So, being a barber, you know, you work on your own, you independent. So, bills are stacking up for my, for my brother, okay? Um, so, I will leave his information to his GoFundMe in the description box below because two of you guys actually asked me how you can help to donate to him and... If, if, if you like, you know, or if you even want to send him something, you know what I'm saying? Um... I can give you information about how you want to do that. Just send me an email or whatever. But I will leave the information to his GoFundMe down in my description box below. Anything helps, you guys. From a dollar to 50 cents. That will help go towards his bills. Because y'all know, shit out here don't pay itself. Um, but thank you to the two people who sent me an email to ask how y'all can help him. That's so sweet. I just showed up. Appreciate you. You ain't even got to do that. Thank you for thinking of my big brother, because I know he's shown sure enough appreciates it. But, um, yeah, I want to let y'all know that. But, y'all, again, this episode was popping. It was too much shit going on. I'm ready to give y'all this review, so hopefully y'all are ready for me to give it to you. So let's get right on up and to it. All right, y'all, so this episode picks up where the last one left off. We at Prima Donna Party. The U-Haul truck done backed up on a big-ass LED screen. On the side of the truck comes Jocelyn Hernandez, baby. What's up, Prima Piggy? I think it's since you're in my city, I'll bring you a, a, a surprise, a present, because you a piggy or whatever. That's when Jocelyn came out. Well, she didn't come out. She had the dudes come out with the big-ass Luau pig. Everybody was just disgusted by it because it was all deflated and shit. The shit looked nasty. It didn't even look appealing at all. So, she tried to play it off at first. Like, okay, I'm sure she used some Prima Donna seasoning on that. She cooked that on Sunday, y'all. It's prayed over. Let's go ahead and eat this damn pig. Really deep down on the inside, she was bothered by that shit. She was real bothered by that shit. Because she was talking to the producer, whoever Lauren was. Lauren had to take the backlash of that. She's like, look here, Lauren. I'm going to need you to let me know next time this bitch is filming. Because I'm pulling up on that ass. She got me messed up. I ain't a killer, but don't push me, goddammit. Don't touch me. Don't you test me. She ready to go pull up on Jocelyn, wherever the hell she at. She pissed off about that. Everybody like, ugh. That's fucking nasty. Like I said, she tried to play it off like she wasn't pissed off about it. But, oh, yeah, she was very pressed. She was very, very, very bothered. I'd be bothered, too, if I was like, bitch, how you just going to bring a smashed up blue owl pig, some pork swine to my goddamn event? I'm supposed to be classy sitting up here looking like the witch of Emerald City. And you just going to sit on send some swine up here to my shit, bitch. How dare you? So Joy and Trina at a restaurant, whatever, they chopping it up over um, the whole concert, or not the concert, the tour that's coming up. And Trina says she got a lot of stuff she got to do. She got to think about lights and settings and bookings and who's doing this and who's doing that. As they conversating, y'all, Bobby Lights come prance his ass up in a whole goddamn throwback Janet Jackson leather thing with a whole turtleneck on his neck and they like nigga why you got all this turtle shit on your neck it's hot out here nigga we in miami it's hot to the motherfucker come to find out this nigga got passion marks aka hickeys i'm old school <laughs> all over his goddamn neck yo i remember back in the day oh i'm telling all my business back in the day when i was a little bopper i used to have this one boyfriend that would always try to put hickey. Now, we wasn't goosing. Nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't nothing but a little, <laughs> little squirrel trying to get nut out there. It wasn't happening. But this motherfucker would love to put hickeys on my nigga. I'm like, nigga, my mama going to kill me when I get home. But <laughs> young bopper, what can I say? I'm saved now. I'm blessed. <laughs> Bob was in some old 
S and M shit. The nigga done choked his ass out in the middle of an orgasm, some shit like that. Child ain't no telling with his goddamn ass. So they end up getting on the subject of Joy. Joy says that she met up with Trick and that she apologized for the whole situation with Nikki Natural and Briscoe. Nothing actually happened. And she feels like that was part of the reason why her, um, Nikki Natural and Trick are not together no more. Then she starts telling them how Trick had old googly eyes and shit for her. She's like, oh, nigga, I ain't feeling that. What he needs is a woman that's his age that I can hook his ass up with so he can leave the fuck me alone. You know what I'm saying? I ain't with the shit. So Trina then tells him that she wants to do a boot camp because she wants to whip these girls into shape and get them ready for this upcoming tour. Meaning she wants to get them, you know, media ready. Get ready to present to white folks, basically, that's got this money that can help us out. Like, babe, don't get up here and act too black. I'm going to have to teach you bitches to turn it on and turn it off. Basically is what the goddamn boot camp is about. Now, Joy says that when she um, she actually met with Nikki Natural, and she, you know, she basically told her, you know, the whole situation with Trick, I apologize, whoop whoop yada, yada, yada. Now, Nikki Natural tells her the way that you can make it up with me, you can holler at Trina to see if you can get on, I, you can get me on this little tour or whatever. Right now, first, when Trina, she came at Trina with the whole team, uh, thing, Trina was like, oh, hell no, absolutely not. I don't like that little bitch. I don't want to hear nothing ripping out of her goddamn mouth, ass, nothing like that. But... Bobby is like, go ahead and invite the bitch because the uh, A game that you already got, you know, she can't hold a count to these bitches. So go ahead and invite her to the boot camp because once she sees that, she going to be knocked up out the goddamn box. Anyway, Trina like, look here, I'm going to invite this bitch, but if I have to choke this hoe, don't say I ain't warn y'all. So Trick goes to the studio. He sees Prima Donna. Prima Donna goddamn rap too. This bitch got her hand in everything. I like her hustle. This bitch said, I'm finna make everything, bitch. I'm finna make LED lights. I'm finna make picture frames. I'm finna make goddamn fire sticks, coconut oil. I'm finna do every goddamn thing out here. And you can't knock a bitch with hustle like that. So, um... Trick Daddy asked her, what the hell happened with you and Jocelyn at this whole goddamn event? I ain't getting none of that shit. Like, what the hell went on? Prima Donna claims that um, Jocelyn wanted to hang with her back in the day. She wanted to be down with her, but she basically paid the bitch dust, and Jocelyn didn't like that. Ever since then, she been coming at her sideways, whoop the whoop yada, yada, yada. Bitch gonna come at me sideways. I'm gonna come back at her ass sideways. Basically, she, she said that Jocelyn is her storyline, and that basically... <laughs> Jocelyn needs her to have a storyline, which mm, I think is probably about 60-40, meaning Jocelyn 16 and you 40, because Jocelyn, I was excited to know that she was on the show, so that's why I watched it, y'all, that's why I was excited. I didn't know you was going to be on the show, and if I did know you was going to be on the show, I'll be quite honestly, I don't know if I'd have been excited, because I, I didn't even really know nothing about no prima donna until... Shit, what is this, episode five? Five episodes to the, uh, ago. Hell, I was today years old when I found out the bitch rap. I didn't even know that. Bitch, we got hood brat at the corner store picking up some seagrams that blue Hawaiian kind, cup of noodle soup, chicken, bitch, and some of them good-ass powdered donuts. <laughs> you see, I'm ratchet. <laughs> Oh, that sounds like a goddamn delicacy right there. She's outside. She's talking to her boyfriend, Kenny. Basically, she's going over the whole thing again about how she got to hustle, hustle hard. Oh, shit, I'm knocking shit over. To be here for her uh, niece and her nephew, King and Queen. That's the cutest little names. I'm sorry. Them just the cutest little names, King and Queen. Mm. She talks about Trina's upcoming boot camp. Boyfriend Kenny, like, what, y'all finna be out there hut hut one two? Like, what the hell y'all finna be doing at no goddamn boot camp? Because, bitch, I know you don't work out. She says, that, you know, she's interested to see what it is. She's just, you know, she's excited to get out there, get a little hustle on, you know, whoop de whoop. Because, again, she has to be strong for her niece and her nephew. Oh, one thing she said that, oh, it kind of touched me right there. When she said the last thing that she remembers her sister saying to her mama is, why can't I be strong like the rest of your kids? Oh, before she, you know, decided to, you know, do what she did. I don't want to say, say that on, oh, I don't even like saying that word. That was just so sad. That, I was like, mm, bitch, let me take a sip or so. Y'all, we got Amada and we got Mamiana. <laughs> Mamiana. She's talking with Mama Yana about the whole situation that happened with Julian and how Julian just, he's, I talk with all my lawyers and my lawyers are saying that he can take my master's and I don't know what I should do. Mama Yana's like, look here. Mira, I need you to talk to, talk to Julian. 
don't be the lawyer then. No, mira, you thought to Julian. And don't take NJ. NJ been here five months. Cinco months. And he, he got his hand and everything. He tried to tell you what to do. He tried to tell you to do this. He tried to tell you to do that. You go talk to Julian without NJ. This is your career. This is your life. Fuck NJ. You go talk to Julian, huh? Ya tu sabes? So what does a matter silly ass do? She goes and she talks to Julian with NJ. So soon as she sits down and she's talking to Julian or whatever, right? You know, she's nervous. She act like she don't know what the hell to say. She's kind of beating around the bush. She's like, okay, so my lawyers are telling me that you want to take all of my masters. You want 100% of everything. You're supposed to be my family. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Julian, when I tell you, that nigga could sell ice to a fucking Eskimo, okay? That nigga slick as hell. He never came out and said, yes, I'm doing that. No, I'm not doing that. He like, look here. First of all, why you holler at the goddamn lawyers? You ain't came out at me. I don't feel like you should have went out and let none of them niggas. You should came to me if you had a problem. You know what I'm saying? Can't none of them niggas help you out get on, get on the map like you supposed to be but me. Nigga, who better than me? She like, well, there. I'm still not going anywhere with my career, and and my lawyers are telling me this, and I just don't understand. Meanwhile, you got NJ over here, and he, you can see steam coming from this nigga neck. He ready to hop in and say what the hell he got to say. Finally, he like, look here, if you don't talk and say what the hell you got to say, I'm finna say what the hell I got to say, cause bitch, this shit get on my nerves. Julian is like, okay, well, since you got so much to say, go ahead. What you got to say, nigga? MJ, like, bottom line, you crossed the line in Los Angeles. You tried to fill up on my girl. You fell up in a goddamn bed. I got a goddamn problem with that nigga. What's good? Julian, like, look here. We both was drinking. I went to the bathroom, took a piss, came out. Oops, I fell in a bed. I ain't realize what I was doing. Now, MJ, like the nigga he is, like, come on now. You don't slip and fall in the pussy. So what the hell really got that nigga was good? Of course, Julian is denying everything. Long story short, she tells him that she wants to part ways with him. But but again, you still didn't get nothing accomplished. Is this nigga taking everything? Are y'all splitting it or what? So I still didn't see no end result to the goddamn thing. So when she told Julian, he was like, okay, cool. Bitch, it is what it is. I holla at you when I holla at you. I got a feeling the nigga do some goddamn sneaky ass shit. Afterwards, y'all, I'm out of sitting at the table. She's crying. She can't leave. She don't know what to do. Ay, Dios mio. And Jake comes over there to support her. Yeah. <laughs> this next goddamn scene made me laugh. Then I'm a motherfucker. We got Joy with her church member, Sister Carol. Looking like she had a deaconess board at the St. Missionary Olive Overthon Mule Baptist Missionary Community Baptist Church. <laughs> she like she makes some bomb ass with goddamn potato salad though. And she looked like Cheryl Underwood. I don't mean that in no bad way. Don't nobody cuff me because I ain't sit for you. She looks like Cheryl Underwood. She's giving strong Cheryl Underwood teeth in the face and the wig area. She's just like Cheryl Underwood. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Cheryl Underwood is beautiful. I'm just saying that's what she look like. So she supposed to be the blind date for Trick. Nothing like what the hell Trick type is. But Joy figures she's an older woman. She's God-fearing church woman. She can probably lead this nigga to the light to where he can get his goddamn life together, right? This nigga Trick Daddy walk in. Joy trying to sweeten him up. Oh, you look cute and you look camouflaged. Who you hiding from, nigga? He walk in, look at Carolyn, Sister Carolyn. He like, and who the fuck is you? She's like, oh, hi. Praise God. <laughs> He's good all the time. My name is Sister Carol. Sister Carol, what to call me? How can I help you? <laughs> I just want to like that. That's what fuck she look like, though. She like, uh, don't be talking to her like that. That's what Joy was saying. She said, this is my home, girl. This is my friend. And nigga, you ain't no friend. She ain't, who, who the hell is you? Basically, she telling Trick, like, look here. I just want you to meet my friend, Carolyn. Carolyn, this is Trick Daddy. First of all, Sister Carolyn can't introduce Trick Daddy to the Deaconess board members. Y'all, deep sisters, this is my Boaz trick, daddy. Bitch, that don't even go in the same goddamn sentence. Joy, like, let me go get you niggas something to drink. Is you hungry, sister Carolyn? Because I know you probably, you've been at church since 
12 o'clock last night and it's 8 o'clock p.m. right now. Let me go ahead and get something to eat, right? She gone on up to the bar. Leave Trick with Sister Carolyn. Sister Carolyn, like, so how do you know that I'm not the type of woman for you? He said, I know I can look at you tell you ain't the type of woman. I'm like, she said, how do you know? You don't know what type of woman I am because you don't even know me. This nigga said, I like my women slutty. She said, oh, well, praise God. That ain't me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Then she's going to say, I can fry some chicken. He's like, I don't care. I can fry some chicken, too. She said, I've been to your restaurant. Your greens need a little bit of work. Now, that's where she struck a nerve with that nigga. Quite honestly, I was on his side. Because look here. I fried the shit out of some chicken. Bitch, don't come at me sideways about my chicken. I cut your ass over my goddamn chicken. After that, he was like, oh, hell no. Y'all better have to get this bitch on up out of my face. You insult my greens and I put my whole goddamn foot in? Oh, no, bitch, no. Mm -mm. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to know you. I don't want you to pray for me. You can get the hell on up out of here because you in the way of what I'm trying to do, what I'm really trying to do, nigga. I'm trying to get joy back. I'm trying to get some joy in my life. <laughs> Just then, joy come back over. He's like, oh, I don't know what you're trying to punk me with, but you going to have to get some scary enough up out of here. Get her ass back in church, and y'all gonna have to try this shit again. Sister Karen said, I don't know how you deal with this, praise God. Woo! We, we gonna go to church, and we gonna pray for this nigga. Have mercy, Lord. And so she ends up walking Sister Carolyn on out to her car. Sister Carolyn said, I need to go and cleanse my soul from this, because I don't, I can't believe you bought this heathen around me. Y'all, so we on the set of Sukiana's, <laughs> bitch, put the dick cord in my throat. Bitch, with the decoy limit. I can't do it like her, y'all. I'm ratchet on, on certain levels. I'm not that level of ratchet. But she on the set or whatever. Girl, she goes outside and talks to Camille and she got a big, juicy ass pickle. Let me tell y'all what we used to do with the pickles back in the day. We used to get about three, four Jolly Ranches and like poke a hole in the middle of our uh, pickle and put them um, Jolly Ranches down there in the pickle. Bitch, so you got sweet and salty. Ooh! Oh, that used to be the goddamn shit. So, Chameleon come and they talking or whatever. She's telling, uh, well, Chameleon ends up telling her that Trina got in contact with her. Said she want her to come on the tour, bitch. So, period, poo, I'm coming on the goddamn tour, bitch. So, they sitting up, they talking up, chopping it up or whatever. Just then, hood brat comes up. Suki is telling them how that uh, puss ass hoe. Nikki Natural stole her phone because she had to roll back that beautiful bean footage from the security camera to see what the hell happened because this puss ass hoe made her lose out on $15,000 $15, in bookings. Puss ass hoe got me messed up. So she said, I ain't going to fight the hoe, but I'm damn sure going to press this bitch when I see her. Like, bitch, what you steal my phone for, hoe? Y'all, so we got Miami Tip, Prima Donna, and um, who else was that? Dawn. Y'all remember Dawn from a couple seasons ago? She was um, Jocelyn's manager. They meet up basically to just sit back and talk shit about Jocelyn. Um, you know, at a point in time, Don and Jocelyn, like I said, that was her manager. They was real cool or whatever. Don said that, you know, Jocelyn is just a messed up, crazy, fucked up individual. She said last time they really had any dealings with each other, Jocelyn contacted her and said she was going to be in her city for a day or so because she was filming something. And Don suggested that she stays at her house, you know, because that's my home girl. That's my bitch, so I'm going to do what I can for her. She says, however so long, I don't know how long afterwards, she ends up getting a call from a police officer saying that her Louis Vuittons were stolen, her computer, laptop, cell phones, and all this. Now, I ain't the brightest bulb in the bunch, but it's some holes in that story. Like, who called the popos? How long was she there for? When you get the phone call? Did y'all get into it? Did she call you back? Like, what happened from that? I got questions on that shit. Uh, Miami Tip apparently has known Jocelyn since they were 13 years old. Miami Tip, Tip said, the bitch I always been crazy. Y'all just now realizing the shit. I've been new to shit. It is what it goddamn is. So, um, once again, Prima Donna is vowing. When I see that bitch, I'm going to put up on that bitch, and it is what it is, that bitch. I'm like, okay, go ahead and get that bitch in, girl. So, it's the day of Trina's boot camp, right? Joy shows up because, of course, she, she support, baby. She going to be there regardless. You know what I'm saying? Trina's telling her, look here, I got everything set up. I'm trying to get all these hoes in shape, whip these hood bitches into shape, you know what I'm saying? So they can be ready for these white folks so they can give off a vibe like they was they wasn't raised outside, goddammit. Just then Nikki Natural shows up, right? 
Now, at first, she shows up and she's a little bit humble. She's like, first, I want to um, thank you, um, Joy, for getting me this opportunity to meet up with Trina, whatever. You know, I show enough, appreciate that or whatever. I felt like that was slick shade. Bitch, why you ain't thank Trina for being there? Why you ain't say thank you for giving me the opportunity to prove to you that I could be better than these hoes? No, she came in there on one. That's my opinion. Because afterwards, she was like, because quite frankly, I feel like I'm doing y'all a favor by being here because I deserve to be here because I'm better than all these other bitches. Joy's like, see, ho, that's what got you in trouble in the first goddamn place. Bitch, you need to humble thine self. You know what I'm saying? Trina like, oh, let me go and go to the bathroom because, um... This bitch ain't fit the word me right now. AKA, the producers have probably whispered in that ear. Look here, I finna need y'all to go to the back because there's some shit about to go down. And I'm sure y'all don't want nothing to do with that shit. Child, just then, in walks Sukiana. Nikki Natural sitting up that way. She sees Sukiana walk in. She like, oh shit, okay, here we go. Baby, Sukiana walked in with a bikini top, bantu knots, pigeon toed in the motherfucker. Ready to goddamn go in on that bitch. She walked in, pigeon told her she wanna do holding her phone like a real ratchet bitch do. She comes in, sits down, puts that phone down, and proceeds to take them damn shoes off. Now, bitch, uh, I what I like to know is why the fuck you decided that you wanted to uh steal my goddamn phone, bitch. Don't you know I'm a mama? Don't you know I'm fucking crazy? You don't see this twitching in my eye? Ho, why you steal my goddamn phone? Nikki Match like, oh, oh, we taking shoes off. Oh, okay, bitch, okay. Nikki proceeds to start taking her goddamn shoes off. Suki Hana like, no, bitch, look, my ankle hurt, and I sprained my motherfucking ankle, bitch, and my goddamn feet hurt, bitch. That would have been me if my shit hurt, too. But wherever I'm at, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm at least pull up and unfasten them and just kind of slip my foot out just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But no, Suki knew what she came there for. She came there because Suki was ready for the smoke. Bitch, she brought the smoke when she came in that goddamn bitch. Suki like, look here, bitch, I want to know why you took my phone. Just then, the producer tried to step in, probably knowing the same one goddamn prima donna was like, look, I'm going to need you to let that bitch know. She like, look here. She telling the producers, I'm trying to talk to this hoe. Trust me, I don't want to put my hands on this bitch, but she ain't trying to talk. Meanwhile, she's saying it to the producer the whole time. Her back is turned towards Nikki Natural. Now, if Nikki was really with the smoke, she'd have came up behind and got her, but you know what I'm saying? She was like, nope, because she really didn't want that smoke. She really didn't want that shit, goddamn Sukiana. I'm telling you, that bitch probably got a razor blade in the back of her goddamn mouth somewhere. As they arguing, right? Nikki takes off her shoe like she finna get ready to do something. Child, next thing you know, in comes Hood Brat. Hood Brat came right in the middle of it, baby. Hood Brat came in there ready. Okay, what's going on? <laughs> I'm ready for this shit. What's going on? Just then, Hood Brat swings that big-ass clog. It looked like a big-ass sketch of that bitch had. That was a thick-ass goddamn shoe. Swings and throws a sketcher at, at Sukiana. I think she might have got it because I heard a big old plop or whatever, right? They going at it. Security comes in to break them goddamn up. As they getting broke the fuck up, in comes Chameleon. Chameleon's like, what the fuck is... <laughs> bitch, what's going on here? She telling that to Joy. Joy like, bitch, I don't know. I just came up. Soon as Chameleon walk in, that's when Joy and Trina came back. Trina like, oh, we in these white folks Airbnb. What the fuck is we doing right here? We can't have none of this ratchet that shit. Suki Hanna trying to tell them, look here, that bitch stole from me. It's on Sight, I owe her this ass whooping. Trust me, I owe her this. Treat her like, look here, we not finna do this shit. This ain't finna happen. Child, they take Nikki outside. Nikki steady running her mouth talking. This half of Suki start picking up rocks and shit, throwing rocks at the bitch. Got the bitch purse and her phone and threw the shit in the goddamn pool. I said, well, damn it, Suki. You gonna have to, that bitch got to replace everything. Child, next thing you know, Trina like, you know what? I'm sick of this shit. We ain't doing this goddamn tour. I'm done with this shit. I'm done with every goddamn thing. Y'all, the episode ends from there. Now, next episode gonna be good because this bitch gonna jump fly with Trina. Now, look here. Not saying that Trina's this big old god and you got to bow down and respect her, but then again, at the same time, bitch, she done paved the way so you can be here where the fuck you trying to be at any goddamn way. You trying to get on her level. Why be disrespectful to her like that? I feel like it's some underlying jealousy or something like that because... She uh, she just been sideways with her from the jump. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Y'all, we gonna see what the hell happened with Trick Daddy when he got his goddamn ass arrested out here on this goddamn nose candy. Lord have mercy. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed, y'all drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. 
what's going on y'all look here if you like this video do me a favor give me a thumbs up share this video comment on this video all of that good stuff and if ain't nobody else told you today i show enough love you and i show enough appreciate you